Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be creating a interactive image to particles uh, simulation in Touch Designer. Uh, this will work with any image that you might have as well as a live video feed. Uh, we'll also be looking at how to simulate it and make it 3D like you can see here as well as making it um, interactive as you can see me I'm just sort of waving my hand around right now. Um, this project file that you're looking at currently with uh, all the extra visual effects and um, play, like plug and play sort of positions is available to download on my Patreon below. Uh, just a few bucks a month and you get access to every project file that I post. Um, but other than that, this the tutorials are very obviously aimed at beginners, should be approachable for anyone in Touch Designer. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this whole network and you guys should be able to follow along with me from scratch. Cool. So the first thing we're going to need to do is go to our tools up here. So if this panel is not already open on your left, you can click this button like so, and then go to our tools. And then we have a tool here called Particles GPU. Now our Particles GPU um, essentially is a pre-made particle simulation. We can double click to look in here. Uh, it's not super important to understand what's going on, but just know that in here that you have a GLSL, which is a programming language, um, computating all the inf information that we put in and rendering out a particle simulation that we can control with these parameters here. So what we're going to want to do is um, make this uh, firstly very flat, and then we're going to plug in our images. So when we click Viewer Active and we interact with this window, we're using the camera and with any cameras in Touch Designer if you just press H that'll reset it back to its base position. Uh, then on the right here we can go ahead and um, leave all of this for now and we'll come back to it. Um, and then we want to go to our forces just make sure we turn these all to zero. Uh, there's four sliders here and it will just stop the particles in their tracks. Um, additionally we can go to our render and you can uh, update your resolution here if you want to. Um, I'm going to make mine 1080p but if you're on the free version you'll be limited to 720p. Uh, material I'm going to change it to line which is just a dot essentially and uh, that's about all we need to do for now and if we also go back to our um, particle source we have a these translate options. Um, the pre-made one is set to be at the top of this box and drag the particles down but we just want to have it be flat so we can set this translate to zero uh, and then we also want to rotate our camera so you can do that if you want or you can simply just type in 90 here and then press H again and uh, you'll see that the particles are being rotated and spawning in like so um, and we can also turn off this bounding box uh, which is this little display bounds button here like so now to put this as our background, uh, we can right click this first output, which is our render output, and then get a null. Uh, and then we can press this little blue button to display as background. Additionally, we can right click and insert an RGB key. Very simple, easy way to get a black background when we have a transparent image. So the first thing we we'll want to do is uh, similar to my other tutorial where we um, converted your webcam to wispy point clouds, we're going to want to create a UV map. Now the what, what that is and how we do that is we press tab and go and grab a ramp and essentially we're going to um, want to create an array of um, particle positions in XYZ coordinates um, or in top it's represented as RGB values, so red, green and blue. Um, but since we only have the image which is going to be our blue like 3d displacement of the particles essentially we want to create a flat 2d plane for that image to sit on don't worry if you didn't understand that um, you just need to follow along so we just need to firstly copy this ramp so we have two and set the second one over here to be vertical we then want to press tab again and grab our reorder and then plug the first one in and the second one in like so we then want to set um, the output green to be input two. Uh, and then for the third one, we can, for now, we can uh, set this to zero. 
um, just you sort of want to get this color so that way we know it's working and then we can re leave the rest as is and we will come back and revisit those soon uh, one other thing we might want to do is if you select both of these and then go to our common tab you'll see the pixel format here um, and we want to change this to be 32-bit float format essentially um, on the 8-bit fixed values it will just generate particles between uh, positions uh, 0 and 1 which makes sense but in, but when we plot that on an XYZ coordinate X so the center point is at 0 0 so if we do only values between 0 and 1 it'll only do this quadrant up here so we want to actually do all four quadrants which is why we want to set it to be 32 bit which will then render it between negative 0.5 and positive 0.5 well no sorry negative 1 and negative uh, and positive 1 uh, next we want to do is go ahead and grab a image so you can go and get the movie file in like so um, and we'll just use the stock banana or maybe we can change this to be the the butterfly that would be fun let's use, use the butterfly um, if your uh, image has a background I have this little tip um, where we can and actually I will show you it with a different image uh, for example let's get the jelly beans here which have the background um, we want to connect in a threshold and then we want to connect in a composite um, this is just a very quick and arguably ineffective way to get rid of a background um, and sorry we want to actually uh, then make this um, in this case we want it to be greater you'll need to play around with it yourself and then sort of just like you can see play with the threshold like so and you can see here it's a very 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 like ineffective way of removing the background um, obviously there's the NVIDIA um, background remover and other tools to get rid of the background which is much more efficient but this is just a very quick way if you just want to isolate these layers so I'm just going to set this to be like there and then maybe drag the soften up a little bit that looks about good not perfect but it'll do for now uh, the next thing I'm going to do is connect in a null because we're going to um, want to use this null to grab a info so if we go to our chop and then get info like so and then drag this null on like that the reason we're doing this is because we need to um, adjust some parameters later on and whenever we update the image we want this to automatically update the rest of the information for us uh, the next thing we can do is actually go ahead and plug this null uh, into the third or fourth we'll do the fourth because um, we'll leave this third one for later and then we want to set the um, output alpha to input four and you can see it is got us like so uh, we then want to connect in a point transform uh, we'll come back to this though and then uh, plug that into our first one here and you can see when we hover over these um, entry points it's like particle source uh, so we can plug that one in like so um, if I go back to my particles GPU as well you can start to play around with um, your different uh, life variants as well as um, your life so I might drag my life minimum down a little bit just so it's like refreshing a little bit more and I'm also going to increase the birth rate to be a bit higher so it's more frequently updating and you see we have the images here the the uh, jelly beans starting to render uh, we have no color so let's fix, firstly fix that so um, in the port particle source color we can plug that one in uh, but you can see this will be pretty mismatched in fact it's really hard to see right now so let's go ahead and make this bigger so that's why we have the point transform now the first thing we want to do with the point transform is we want to fix the scale um, so it's not in the square format so what we're going to do is use the resolution here to make sure we get the right scale by dividing the x scale by the y scale now you could just type these numbers in but that's not uh, the most robust solution so instead I'm going to go ahead and click this plus and drag res x on to my first scale slot like so and go chop reference then I want to simply do a little divide and what I'm actually going to do is copy this first bit here with the um, info one res x and paste it 
and then change it to be res y instead of res x. So to be clear, we are doing this op res x divided by the same ops res y. And then we can press enter. And if you're using the same aspect ratio as me, you will get this number. Um, and you can see it fixes the resolution here and now the colors are all matching up. We then can um, change the uh, transform order to translate first um, and then scale and rotate. Uh, and then we can drag the uniform scale up like so. You can see it's now sitting in the top right quadrant. That's because we need to adjust our translate to um, initialize it not from 0 0.00. We need to offset that to actually um, have the center point match up. So we can do that by setting both these first two x and y to negative 0.5, like so, negative 0.5. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and increase the birth rate a bit more. See a bit more particles. If your computer can handle it, you can probably go up to like 10,000 or even 100,000 particles, uh, depending on your computer. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the foundation of this. So you can see what we have currently is uh, when we plug in an image, we get a 2D um, particle uh, little simulation like so. Um, but what we need to do now is firstly make this interactive and then also make it 3D. So um, let's do the interactive part first because if you're following along and using a webcam, which you could be using a webcam for this, um, this will still work. So we can go ahead and get our video device in. Um, and I'm just going to set this to be my uh, camera. I'm going to disable that. Then we go back to our tools and we grab optical flow. Um, so optical flow is essentially just going to um, map the movement of an object in a UV map. And in this case, when I move around, you can see uh, I'm appearing and it's capturing my movements, uh, which is really handy because we have a optical flow input like so. Uh, and you can now see when I move around, it's go crazy. When we go back to our forces tab, you can have see the optical flow settings and remap and all that as well. You can also now play with like some of the wind if you want the particles to like um, keep flowing once you knock them around. In terms of uh, adjusting the optical flow, there's also um, your forces as well as a threshold here. I highly recommend that you just simply play around with these values to make it work best for your environment. Depending on your camera, your lighting, and a bunch of other factors, it'll behave differently for everyone. So I'm not going to go too into specifics on what settings is best because it's very dependent on your environment. But yeah, simply play around with these values as well as the values in the forces on the uh, particles GPU. The next thing we want to do is make these particles 3D. So this is a bit of a hacky method um, because there's a lot of new AIs out now that uh, can create depth maps from uh, a simple image just by like inferring knowledge. So option one is you could use a system like a Kinect or a LiDAR sensor on your phone, which I've done tutorials on, which have depth maps in them and you can combine that to create a 3D look. Alternatively, and I'm going to leave the link for this down below, uh, we can grab a um, website like this. And again, the link is there and you can upload your image and then you'll get a corresponding um, depth map output. Cool. Uh, you can see here I've uploaded my um, jelly beans and you can see also there's zero free depth maps remaining. I did quite a few on testing <laughs> for this video. Um, but yeah, you just upload the image like so and then click generate depth map. There are many AIs also currently in development that will use live video. I'm not going to show that. Obviously, it's probably a bit too advanced, but if that's something you know how to configure and set up, then it could be worth looking into integrating that into Touch Designer. So if I go ahead and save this image and drag it down like so, uh, we have our depth map. And now we can connect in a level, which is just going to help us adjust the um, intensity of it. And we can connect this into our third bit of the reorder and set it input three and then set it to blue because um, red and green 
so if we have x, y, and z, we have RGB. So red is x, so our x coordinates, and then y is our horizontal, which is what we've set up here. So now we're passing in our blue, so our z, which is our vertical offsets, um, which is why it's a, you know, you can see a same zero to one, so black to white value. And we can now adjust the camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable this opti optical flow just so it's not. Um, and we have a somewhat AI attempted version at creating a depth map. So this is very warped, So which is why we have our um, level plugged in. We can drag the brightness down to adjust the settings and just sort of get a bit of a 3D displacement look going on, which that's kind of cool. It's just slightly coming off, but Jolly Beans aren't too big anyway. Um, and I can sort of like, you know, play around with the camera position that um, and then you can uh, like in my first file that you can download from my patreon you can add in visual effects as well as maybe a bloom or a blur to emphasize the depth and you can also again plug this optical flow back in and make it all interactive but yeah that's pretty much it for today's tutorial uh, I hope you guys enjoy this um, Again, Particles GPU, there are so many great um, little bits you can play with in here. You can play with making the particles a lot smaller and uh, changing the life variance so we can make them a lot smaller. And we have a lot more now that will move around. So I highly recommend just play around with these settings, guys. But if you've enjoyed today's video, um, <laughs> like and subscribe and all that is greatly appreciated. Uh, again, my Patreon is just a few bucks a month and you can get access to... Uh, all my um, project files as well as any of the modules that I'm currently working on but uh, yeah that's pretty much it for today I'll see you on the next one peace